Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous several videos, we saw that when we have two objects revolving around the barycenter, we could actually determine their relative masses by detecting their Doppler shifts and therefore their relative velocities. And also we can then understand their relative radii. But what happens if we have the case where the mass of the large object is much, much greater than the mass of the small object in such a way that R1, the distance from the barycenter to the center mass of the large object, approaches zero, and therefore the distance of the small object to the barycenter is roughly the same as the distance from the small object, the center mass of the small object, to the center mass of the large object. So essentially, the velocity around the barycenter of the large object becomes virtually zero. And so how do we determine the velocity of the small object? And can we find some sort of mass relationship here? And the answer is yes, we can by using Newton's law of gravity and also realizing that for any object revolving around another object, and then in this case, the small object does indeed revolve around the large object since the barycenter is virtually in the same place as the center mass of the large object, we can then assume that the force of gravity equals the centripetal force. So what we can then write is that the force of gravity on the small object, because of the pull onto the big object, must equal to the centripetal force. And Newton's law of gravity tells us that we have g times m1 m2 divided by the distance between them, which in this case would be r squared, which is the same as r2 in this case. And that would be equal to the centripetal force, which is equal to m v squared over r. Now in this case, that's the same r because it's the radius of the moving object, and it would be the velocity of the small object, so we can call that v2 squared. And so let's now calculate this velocity, and this of course also m2, because it's the mass of the small object. Now let's solve this equation for the velocity of the small object, and let's see what happens. Well, first of all, we can get rid of the mass on both sides, and we have one r here, and we have r squared here, so this can cancel out with that. And now we can solve for v squared. We get v2 squared is equal to g m1 divided by the distance from the small object to the large object. And so therefore, if we then take the square root of both sides, we get v2 is equal to the square root of the gravitational constant times the mass of the large object divided by the distance between the small object and the large object. So what we can see here is if there's some way for us to detect the velocity of this object, we can then also find the mass of the large object. So let me also solve this equation for m1. We can then say that m1 is equal to the velocity of the small object squared times the radius divided by the gravitational constant. Now we should recognize the top equation as the orbital velocity equation. Anytime one object revolves around another object, and the other object is large enough so that it's the very center is at the same location as center mass, the velocity of the small object, like a satellite around the Earth, a satellite around the Moon, can be found by taking the square root of g times the mass of the large object divided by the distance from the object that revolves around the, the large object and the large object. So this is basically the velocity of a satellite, the velocity of the Moon around the Earth very closely because again the very center is very close to the center of the Earth. Or, if we know the velocity of that small object, we can then calculate the mass of the large object. And that's how it's done.